so much to say about the next guest we have coming to the stage. She is a wife, a man, mother, speaker, author, vegan influencer, restaurateur, and the virtual aunt America's mom, honestly, that we all need. Huh? Her words of encouragement feel like warm hugs on a cold winter day. She is the 2021 NAACP Outstanding Social Media Personality Award winner. Number one on the New York best-selling times list and also the New York Times best-selling list, okay? On, Please welcome to the stage my <laughs> sister, Tabitha Brown. Oh, Tab, welcome. Yeah. We are so glad that you're here in the midst. Oh, well, praise God for that. I mean, Thank she you. flew in from London. From direct. London all the way. London, um, Northridge, California. <laughs> <laughs> Tab, welcome. Before we get to where you are, yeah. let's go to where you came from. Okay. Take us Eden. back to Eden. Okay. Amen. The psalmist says, the psalmist say, let's get back to Eden, okay. living on top of the world. So what was Eden. it like as a young tab growing up in Eden, North Carolina? Oh, honey, you know, it was it was very good. OK, mm -hmm. uh, country. Yeah. Right? I, I'm from a, a little town called Stoneville, which is outside of the city of Eden. Oh, so it's even smaller than Eden. Oh, very much. So. <laughs> yeah. I think maybe when I was growing up, maybe I don't know. It could still be about 700 people or so. But that might be pushing it. Um, but Eden is my city, yeah, right? Yeah. But uh, Stoneville, I lived in a neighborhood called River Bend. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay. We had a little pond in the back. Uh, way before I was vegan, you know, we fished and, you know, got lost in the woods. And quail like eggs? That. Did you eat quail eggs? I, I did with my granddaddy. You know, quail eggs? We had a quail though? farm. Yeah, they were little bitty eggs, honey, and, you know. It, and they scrambled up small too mm. before I was vegan. Before okay. you was vegan. <laughs> so I, I heard you, I read you, you ate everything your granddaddy ha hunted. Yeah. Beef, pork, possum. Yeah, squirrel. Squirrel? Yeah, all of the things. And that didn't, that didn't strike you as no way. It struck me in no way. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when you, you little and you, um, you know, mm. first of all, I was with my great granddaddy mm -hmm. a lot of the times as a very little girl. Yeah. My granny's daddy. And. It, he was like the best, right? Mm -hmm. I, that's who I first learned to go to church with, was him. Because, you know, I was one of them kids. I grew up in the church, but mm -hmm. before my mom and daddy got saved. Oh, but, yeah. But, they, but I still went to church. They right. didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but they, I got dropped off at my granny house, and I went to church with them, you know? Yeah. And so uh, that was my upbringing. So whatever my granddaddy did was gold. I believed in whatever, mm. you know? I learned how to pick strawberries from him and mm. did all of the things. So... Uh, that was just, that was it. So is it true you was a, a tomboy playing football as a kid? Oh, yeah, honey. My neck probably ain't right to this day <laughs> because of it, okay? Frankie and Fonte tackling me. Yeah. In the, but we did it in the yard. Really? You know, in the field. Oh, yeah. Climbing trees. That's why I didn't know how to cook. <laughs> I ain't had time to do that. Honey, I got I to gotta go outside and play. Really? And listen, all day. So you was hunting, fishing, <laughs> tackling. I won't necessarily hunt. You was with your granddad. But my hunting. granddaddy would hunt, and whatever he brought, we ate. You know, <laughs> got but, it. Um, but yeah, I, I was a tomboy. I loved like anything outside. Mm. I still love being outside now. I, I mean, I can't swim. Really? Because the pond was dirty, so you can go in there. Oh and yeah, that's true. Anyway, but we ain't had no pool. <laughs> we ain't had no pool. <laughs> so and, you, and the beach was hours away. Was that Myrtle Beach? Yep. Myrtle Beach or Virginia Beach mm. or North Carolina Beach, but they all about three, four hours away. And you can't, you can't just pull I up mean, on I that. just can't, yeah. You just can't pull and up then on the, that. The, the pool that you did learn to swim in, you know, they just throwing people in. My mom and them won't go in. <laughs> That's how Chance learned to swim, though. Is it really? He just got through in there. And he was, you going to die or learn? You're going to die or learn. <laughs> I don't know how many people died in there, but a whole lot of people learned. <laughs> <laughs> now, you met Chance when you were five? No, I met Chance when I was in fifth grade. Oh, fifth grade. Yeah. I just saw the I kinda five. I kind of knew of him before, but mm. yeah, it's the same number. Yeah, that Lord had just gave me, gave me five. Yeah. I was like, grade or number? He yeah. said, don't, I mean, I'm tab going to tell you. Yeah, fifth grade. <laughs> fifth, yeah, fifth grade. Fifth grade. But prior to that, I feel like I seen him like at the rec and stuff, but we went to different elementary schools. Got it. Got yeah. it. Yeah. So now your older sister says you were always trying to make people laugh. Yeah, Where do you think that came from? Um, You know, I think it was something that lives inside of me, mm. right? Uh, but my daddy always played, like, uh, comedians and stuff all the time around me. Mm. I grew up watching stand-up. I grew up listening to Jerry Clower. You know who Jerry Clower is? I don't know. I was going to lie with he you. He is. <laughs> it, it was, a, it was a, like, a series of um, tapes my daddy would always play, like the actual cassette tapes and records of Jerry Clower. He was, um, I don't even know where he was. It was a white southern man from maybe, like, Alabama mm -hmm. or Mississippi. Uh, and he was a comedian. And so my daddy would play it all the time. 
And uh, he would always, his like tagline would be like, knock him out, John, it won't be long. <laughs> and I just would be like, oh, he playing Jerry Cloud. And I would just go sit around and they would be outside. And I just saw how everybody loved that. Mm-hmm. So inside of me, I was like, I want to make people laugh too. And I just, you know, my daddy would always buy me joke books. And I would really? study the joke books. And so for the next cookout, I'd be like, all right. <laughs> I'm ready, honey. And so it started real early for me. Wow. Now, yeah. I know you tried, you not tried, you did stand up as yeah. well and you're a comedic actress. Do yeah. you think it started then from them, from the record? I think so. Mm. I think so. I just, uh, I knew I always wanted to entertain. Okay. Right? From early on watching the Cosby show, right? I yeah. knew I you wanted, wanted to be to, Rudy. I wanted to be her friend. Mm-hmm. I did. I wanted to be, I wanted to ring the doorbell. I didn't like that Peter didn't talk. <laughs> I didn't like that. Remember her little yeah, book? Yeah, I yeah. was like, I got something I can say. If I ring the doorbell and come in the house, I'm going to say something. <laughs> Mama, can you call them and let them know I want to come in? Call, call the Cosby call Show? Them. I want to go in there and ring the doorbell, and I got something to say. And then I want to come home. <laughs> so that was my way of saying I want to be an actress. Yeah. Right? But not understanding that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but pursuing it ever since and knowing, like, I loved how we watched that show together mm-hmm. every Thursday as a family. Yeah. And I love that we did that. So I thought, I feel like at an early age, oh, if I could make people gather and watch every Thursday, mm-hmm. that's important. Yeah. So I wanted to do that. So I just, it's, it has always lived inside of me. So did you pursue this at Moorhead? I did drama at Moorhead. Mm-hmm. I did community theater at Moorhead. What was that like? Were you like, oh, this is... I, I was one of the only blacks in drama, mm-hmm. um, especially black girl the only yeah uh in my class you know a lot of people talk junk about me they're like oh girl you 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 want to be white and i'm like how do i want to be white just because i'm in drama <laughs> right <laughs> but that's the mentality of yeah. like some you know small towns and some people were like it's cool mm-hmm. but even that old town did not care really right i ain't care i was like i'm about to wear all these costumes <laughs> i'm finna do all the you know the plays and I enjoyed it. Mm. You know, it was my only escape, my only little thing that I could do. And then I found community theater, anything at church. I'd be like, y'all going to do any plays? Because I want to be in the plays. Mm. So anything I could do to perform, I did. Really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you're talking about your church. That's, is that Mount Hermon Baptist Church? Mount Hermon Baptist Church uh, was a church I went to. So that's like the home church of my daddy's family okay. in Ruffin, North Carolina. But So that is where I spent the majority of my time from like, uh, fifth grade on up. On up, okay. Before then, it was my it was my uh, my granny's church that I feel like changed names, but I went to like St. Paul. That we had like a whole bunch of like mm-hmm. little, but I always called my granny's church my granny John church. Yeah. I don't think I ever really knew the name of it. <laughs> it's not important because it was just like oh, I go to my granny John church. He had the keys because the church was on his property. Oh, right? really? He lived behind it, so he had the keys. He would unlock the church, clean the church, everything. I'd be wondering, did he own the church? Wow. He wasn't a pastor, but he had the keys to the church. And he lived, he walked out, locked the church, and walked around the back and was at home. Yeah. Wow. So you was singing and all that in the church? Oh, yeah. That's why I learned to play the tambourine. Mm. Give me the tambourine. Do we got it? Don't give me a tambourine. We, I, we <laughs> might have got one. Marquita Bradley, you know, the Holy Ghost had been speaking Listen, to her. Uh-uh, you know, you do that. <laughs> the Holy Ghost had the, been somebody speaking. Somebody get the, you know. Oh, yeah, I hear it. <laughs> I hear it. Come on, Marquita Bradley. Give Tab a little something. No, she didn't bring the tambourine. Come on. People want to praise him. This is what it looked like. It was about, it was this, you know, that's a starter up. That's a starter up. Yeah, that's that then, baby tambourine. Look, you put that thumb. You, Listen. <laughs> Oh, that just took me back, honey. <laughs> honey, I had busted a mini a tambourine, honey. That's when you know your hand is Holy Ghost yeah. healed. <laughs> yes. Wow. Oh, my you God. You know, when they got fancy, they start putting a dip in them. Yeah, they did. Yeah, my granddaddy said, that is not a tambourine. Take that back to the pits of hell where it came from. <laughs> That's amazing. That's that church. That's that church. That's that church. Listen, I t- you you know, I told you how I, when I first got the Holy Spirit, my granny said, was you at a Baptist church? Oh, you ain't got no Holy Spirit. You ain't got no Holy really? Ghost at a Baptist church? Oh, no, you playing. <laughs> yeah, I was so excited to share with her because she was Pentecostal, you know. That's how I grew up. If you ain't Pentecostal, you ain't holy. Th- that's how I knew. Listen. I told Melissa, me and Melissa was in the same high school. I went to church with her on Wednesday after track practice. Yeah. She went in her track suit, <laughs> pants. I said, "Oh, clearly you guys aren't saved." Y'all ain't saved. <laughs> if y'all not, if y'all just don't want to be saved, then you, just tell. You just wearing say pants? It. You wearing pants yeah. to in 
Listen. You done crossed over Listen. into the barrier? Pants or red lip or your ears oh, appear. You are bound to go to hell. Just say you don't love them. Listen, that's what. <laughs> Just say you don't love them. It'll be faster. That's what my granny told me. So now I heard you was also a bit of a seamstress. Well, yeah. I started. So I was always around my great, great aunt. Her mm-hmm. name was Aunt Bet. Uh, I actually talk about her in my book. But uh, she Is that the New York Times <laughs> best selling book? Yes. Okay. The one and only. Because I had bought. Feeding the soul because what? Uh, That's my business. That's your business. Yeah. I done gave them to my Patreon. I gave them away. Very good. Yeah, I ordered my 25. Listen. And then Spice ordered 26. And then Chance ordered 30. Just okay, to be well, fair. You know, see, just to be that, fair. You got to have friends like that. Honey, listen. <laughs> I, and I love and appreciate y'all. Yeah. But my Aunt Bet, um, she was the town seamstress and cosmetologist. She did everybody's hair and made everybody's clothes mm. um, and could not hear nor talk. So, But that was her gift. Right. So she was also our babysitter. Mm. So I spent every summer in there with my mom and dad and them at work. And I met my granny house because she lived with my granny and my granddaddy. But we had the old house that sat uh, up on the hill. Mm-hmm. And that was her workspace. Yep. So I was sitting there with her all day. And, you you know, she can't hear her talk. So there ain't no music playing. And, you know, she had the TV on, but the sound won't on. <laughs> but she was in there making clothes. And I would just watch her all the time. So mm. that came, like, natural to me, I guess. So in high school, I did home economics. I started in like eighth grade, mm-hmm. started sewing a little bit, and was like, "Oh, I like this." Yeah. And so then I started making clothes, my own clothes in high school. So what kind? What What was them clothes looking like? What was your style? Well, you know, I'm a, a hippie. Okay, yeah. I was very much so a hippie in high school. <laughs> yeah. From what I can remember, because I was a real hippie. <laughs> if you get my drift. <laughs> that was on that stuff. <laughs> Listen, I'm in love with Mary Jane. <laughs> She's my ma- that was the old tab, okay, and that's her business. Um, but I always they, we had Dollar Day at, at Goodwill, mm-hmm. so every week you had Dollar Day. So yeah. I would go and I would buy a bunch of dresses and corduroy bell bottoms, um, and then I would take them to school and like redesign them, mm, okay. you know, make the bell bottom a little bigger, or I would buy curtains and make them into skirts or dresses. Really? Yeah. So you've been creative in a lot of different ways for forever. Yeah. Pretty much. I'm a creator. You are a creator. The creator made me to create. Come on and bless Come him. on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you oh. ain't saved if you ain't had to play it for a little bit. Yeah, that most. Listen. Okay. Yes. What so you graduate high school and then yeah. you move, you go to college at Miami yeah. International University of Art and Design. Mm-hmm. So what was that like? Yeah, so n- International Fine Arts College. That's what I said. I yeah, because mm-hmm. it it's two wrong. different ones, and yeah. people be thinking that, and I didn't have the um, uh, SAT to get into that. <laughs> so <laughs> when I went to get in, need no SAT. <laughs> you just signed up? Because it's an art school. Oh, art yeah. schools, you don't really need uh, SAT. Yeah, don't worry. That's we're, test. That's we're here. We're here. We're yeah. creators. Yeah. Uh, and I went to study fashion design, mm. and I applied for that school on my own in 11th grade. Early on, 11th grade, I was like, I know I'm going to go ahead and go. Cause my mom was like, I know you want to do your acting thing, but you you need something else to fall mm-hmm. back on. So I went down there for the first semester, and it was going great. Learn how to you know sketch, cause that was something I didn't do mm-hmm. sketching. Uh, and it was amazing. Uh, the experience was great, but I was like, I, I'm supposed to be acting. <laughs> I do this later on, you know. I do this later. Did so. you call your dad and tell him you wasting his oh, money? Oh yeah, on a Wednesday night, and about one in the morning, I woke up. I was like. Mm. I'm going to call my daddy. You know my daddy's girl. And my daddy worked hard. I ain't going to waste his money down there in Miami. <laughs> you know, he brought me down there. My daddy is ninth grade education, okay? He'd already brought me down there. And the people was, like, speaking Spanish to him. And it, I guess he looked Cuban or something. And, right. And he was like, yeah, you on your own down here. I, I can't help you, you know? <laughs> can't so help you, Tom. Like, hey, I don't know what, what they say, oh. So <laughs> I called him. I was like, daddy, um, I'm wasting your money. I'm supposed to be acting. You got to come get me. And did you immediately go to to LA? I caught, no, no, I went back home. Oh, you s- <laughs> let I me went back to Eden. Oh, you <laughs> and I was there like this. Hmm, you wasn't living on top of the world I, yet. No, no, I, I was trying to figure it out. Mm. So I then I applied to Columbia College in Chicago. Okay, got accepted. Went out there with my mama uh, in the spring, and it was beautiful. I was like, oh my god, this is gonna be it. I'm about to pursue my acting now. Mm-hmm. And then I uh, worked all summer to save my money. I was working at American Express mm. call center. Tab can always get a job, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, about two weeks before it was time to go, they sent me a letter saying, oh, we cannot approve your financial aid. And I was like, uh-oh. And my mom and dad had already maxed out the money in, in Miami, you know? Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, what now? And so then that's how I ended up in California, but in Orange County. Laguna and Legale. Yeah, Laguna and Legale. That, fancy. That very fancy. Fancy, but in a room. 
In a room. Renting a room. Yeah. In a, someone else's house. In a in an apartment. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. That somebody had told me, you can come out here. Yes, we have a great setup. And I didn't know it was a setup. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so what was there. that like? Well, you're, you're in L.A., but you you know, you're not really. I never. I came to L.A. probably two times the whole time we was there. Because uh, I went first. I was there for about three months. The mm-hmm. plan was this. Okay. Because me and Chance were together. This yep. is 98. So the plan was, I'm going to go. I'm going to stay for about three months. Mm-hmm. Then you come out, and we're going to get our own place. Okay. Right? And then I didn't tell nobody how bad it was. And then Chance came, and he said, hey. This don't make no sense. The lady robbing you, right? <laughs> right, right. And I didn't want to think that. He yeah. was like, you pay all the bills, and these people living in the other room, and they don't pay no bills. All her family, her brothers and nephews, mm-hmm. in a two-bedroom mm. apartment, okay? So and I was, was in one, and the whole family was in the other room? Yeah. She had her own bedroom. She had the master with the bathroom. I had to share the bathroom with her brothers, two brothers and a nephew, and they was nasty. <laughs> um, th- I just thought about it. <laughs> uh, and... I couldn't watch TV in the front room because that's where they stayed. And so, but I had to pay the cable. I paid all, and I was 19. What? 19. Yeah. You paying the cable and can't watch it? I, nope. Can't nobody watch it then? No, they watch it. Yeah, right. That's what Chance said. Man. And you know, Chance. Yeah, I know Chance was right. Like. The Chance that the world know now was very calm. Mm-hmm. 19, Chance was a hothead, okay? <laughs> Chance came, he got off the plane with Tim's on and fatigues. <laughs> <laughs> and a jersey <laughs> ready okay <laughs> oh. so, but uh but yeah so then the plan was you know maybe let's let's try to save up our money and move back to north carolina mm-hmm. and then save up for about a year yeah and then we'll move to la because i was working two jobs i was working at onyx acceptance which is a uh again chas can always get a job it was like a uh car finance company okay and so i did all the data entry got chance a job we worked side by side we was entering entering these applications really and i worked at express the clothing store in Mm. mission viejo mall and uh did that and we saved up for you know a couple months and by that june we moved back to greensboro greensboro yep and then that one year plan Turning into five. Turning into five. Don't it really happen like that? Ooh, honey, but I'm, I'm so grateful for it. Why are you grateful now? Because, I, I mean, if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be here to tell you about the story. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Every, every year, every piece of it uh, plays a role. Mm-hmm. So yeah. what happened in that five years that was supposed to be one? So uh, we moved back, got jobs, mm-hmm. right? Uh, got pregnant, mm-hmm. got married, got a house. W- was that the order? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, choice was the flower girl in our wedding. <laughs> And that's your business? Oh, okay. I thought somebody said so. I, <laughs> <laughs> I said she was. <laughs> Honey, she was one, okay? <laughs> Frowning the whole time. People were like, oh, you're so good. Choice was a fr- Choice, the face she has now, she has always had. Really? Very serious and stern, just like her daddy. She was like, why are these people calling? My name. <laughs> I don't know none of these people. You know, we had like three hundred people, but, um, but yeah, that was the order, mm-hmm. and uh, and then I got that feeling of not stuck but content, and I gotta be okay with it mm. because I'm from a small town, right? Even though we were living in Greensboro, mm-hmm. to move to Greensboro from Eden means oh, you have done well, yeah, right, yeah. But to have a baby early, you know, we. Very young at this point. We we 22, 23 years old. Mm-hmm. At this point, we got two kids together because Chance already had a daughter. You know, yeah. they're six years apart. So then we got a, a baby now. Mm-hmm. We are both working. Yeah. Uh, you know, Chance had built a little studio in our house because he loved music. Mm-hmm. So he had started, like, building his own little music studio. And people was coming over, recording and doing things. And we was like, okay, this is going to be this going to be, gonna be cool it. And we're going to work our jobs. and. That's going to be all right. So when was it, like, not cool no more? Um, When the Lord woke me up one morning about, like, maybe, oh, I think it had to be, like, oh, two. Okay. Uh, My bed shook. Literally, oh. that's the best way I can explain it. It felt like an earthquake happened in Greensboro, North Carolina. Oh, wow. My bed shook. It woke me up, and I heard a voice that said, this is not the life I planned for you. And the voice sounded like thunder. And I got scared. Mm. And I was like, uh-oh, Taz. 
you might be losing it. So we're going to pray about it. <laughs> so I got on my knees. And I was like, Lord, if this is you, I need you to show me a sign today. Like, what do you mean by that? Um, and if not, I'm going to check myself in. Right. Because that's how loud this voice is. Really? You ain't never heard that. Because, you know, sometimes God will give you little, mm-hmm. hey, you know, little reminders that he is here and he's speaking to you and we'll ignore it. And then sometimes he got to come like thunder <laughs> and scare the life out of you. Whew, you God had you know what <clears throat> I ain't really had to do this in a minute. <clears throat> Tab, it's Big G up here. Okay. Stop playing with me. Listen, he he was like, "This Big G up here, <laughs> stop playing with me." <laughs> it was the scariest thing I've ever heard. Really? Yeah, absolutely. But I was like, okay. Mm. And so then later that day, we was on the way to the mall, and Buster Brown came on the radio. And he was like, hey, this is Buster Brown. I got a new TV show on the WB Network, and, and I'm holding auditions looking for a female co-host. And I lost it in the car. Yeah. And I was like, that's my sign. I'm in Greensboro. Ain't nobody having auditions yeah. for TV. <laughs> right. On the same day that I done prayed and asked the Lord for a sign. Yeah. Went to the audition, and I booked it. And that's when things start to change. Okay, so that means you coming back to L.A. Well, I did that for a year. I produ- that's where I learned. Oh, Buster Brown was in. It, it, oh, they produced it in Greensboro. He was in North Carolina, yeah. Oh, Buster Brown was that in North, North Carolina? Yeah, yeah. On the was, television program? Yeah, you, it came on at twelve thirty, <laughs> at midnight after midnight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not many people saw it. <laughs> oh, but those of you who did, we praise God for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I wish I'm gonna have to hit Buster and see because he actually moderated my 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 book tour, my first stop mm. in Greensboro. I went back and had him do my moderation. Did you? Absolutely. You ain't forget old Buster. I don't forget nobody. Mm. Okay. But if we could find the old footage, we was doing sketches before there was a, before any of like the Vine stuff. We were doing that on the show. Really? Oh my God. We was doing all the things. And I would interview people. And uh, my first interview was uh, LL Cool J. Oh, you was interviewing real people down yeah, in Greenville. Yeah, Nas, Lil' Kim, all the people. Anybody who came for a concert, I went backstage to interview them for the wow. show. Wow. Yeah. Did you feel at home when you was doing that? Yes. I felt like, oh, man, this is what I, okay, this is cool. And it just gave me a burning desire for more. Mm-hmm. And so then I started back doing, like, uh, theater in the community. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I started driving, like, three hours to do extra work uh, in Wilmington because that's where the studios are. So mm-hmm. I would go to One Tree Hill. And do uh, yeah, extra work, yeah. and then be walking back and forth on the screen. You ain't, ain't say <laughs> nothing, but I was there. I was like, "Look close." There, there I go, right there. That's that's the back of my head. Like, <laughs> that was me right there. <laughs> that's the real the grind part yeah. of Hollywood. But I just wanted to be there so yeah. I can know. Okay, this is what it feels like to be on a set. Mm-hmm. And after I did that for about a year, I told Chance, I said, "Now it's time for us to move back to LA." Mm-hmm. And he was like, "Nah, I'm good." Really? Yeah, I was like, oh, "Okay." He didn't hear that thunder. No, he didn't hear it. <laughs> the thunder was just you? That's how it be. You know, when the Lord give you something, he ain't going to give it to everybody else. It ain't for nobody else. Sorry if that's loud, but if a praise going to be here, it's going to come out of me. I ain't going to hold no praise for y'all. You going to hear it. I ain't really a good tambourine player, Listen. but I, I'm going to bang it. <laughs> I'm going to bang it. Listen, it won't for chance. It was for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but what it did was made a non-believer a believer. Oh, the God of Abraham. Oh, That's the God of Tab. Listen. Yeah, that boy. <laughs> he ain't spoke to me, but he spoke to you. Listen, he speak to you every day. Mm. Every day. We, he, we are sitting in what he spoke. Oh, no, that was chance. He, he talked to me. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but you're right. Yeah. That is chance. You're right. Yeah. So yeah. so tell me, now the, the unfortunate part is around this time your mom got sick. Uh, so when I moved to L.A., mm-hmm. so after we, we decided, okay, we're going to move to Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, we moved here in 04. Okay. And right before we uh, left, my mom had started having like a little, um, what they kept telling her, she had an inner ear infection. Okay. Because she was being off balance and she would walk. And so she was like, it ain't nothing. It's just a little vertigo, you know. Mm-hmm. And so um, that's what we thought. And then after moving there uh, in 04, it was like Halloween of 04 is when we moved there. Mm-hmm. Oh, this week. This week. It's Halloween week. This We got on the road because we drove. It took us two days. Mm. This, what is today the 28th? Today's the 28th. On this day. Oh! On this day, Tab! We got in our U Haul and the Suzu Trooper, and I had a Cadillac on the bed. Oh! Uh, we packed it up and got on the road. Really? Yep, because the, when we got here that weekend, 
Halloween fell on that weekend while we were here. Wow. And that was our first weekend. At, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, I think. Right. Oh, God, I think. And that was 04, and here we are, right? Wow. Um, and then my mom got sick. She continued to get sick. Mm-hmm. And then in uh, June of the next year, she was diagnosed with ALS. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. What was that like for you? Because I know you grew up Whew. close-knit, yes. family girl. Country <laughs> and family is almost synonymous. It, yeah, it's one and the same. It's one and the same. It, the, my world stopped, mm. right? Because, you know, the thing about it is um, I was so excited to get to L.A. finally. And I was like, oh, now, you know. I'm about, right. to, I'm about to do it. Yeah. And then I got here. It, it, no, w- nobody was waiting for me. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want anybody to be confused. Like, ooh, Tab had a job set up. I was working at the Macy's, and I had to apply for that job, honey. But I needed that 15 an hour, and it was a blessing. Okay. Yeah. Um. And so I had just like kind of figured out. Oh, I got you know acting classes set up, and mm-hmm. everything was just starting to take off. And then when sh- that happened, none of that mattered. Right. Right. You get one mama. Mm-hmm. And so. My world stopped. But I'm so grateful. You know, my mama taught me so much during that time. She mm-hmm. taught me things my entire life. Right. But what she taught me during that time was first and foremost um, that had she been diagnosed before, I'd have never left. Mm-hmm. So God had to get me out first. Right. Because that would have been something else that would have made me say, I ain't, I'm not leaving. You know what I'm saying? Um, but that also that everything has a purpose. Yeah. Her sickness had a purpose. Um, Her death had a purpose, right? And I learned that going through it. I didn't understand it while in the middle of it. But now, I wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation, Mm. right? But everything stopped. I went back and forth for um, three years to help take care of my mom until she passed away. Mm. Mm -hmm. So what was that like? You know, (coughs) she she became a pastor during the transition. Yeah, yeah. How was that to see her be like, I'm going to take something new on while I'm struggling with this? Man, that was... To, to when I think back on it, because when she got diagnosed was June uh, of 05. Mm-hmm. And so she said, now I know you're going to live in California because the Lord has, has showed me this is where you're going to be for a very long time. I'm going to come out there so I can see where you gonna, where you will be. Mm. And so she came in August uh, of 05 okay. while she still could, right? Mm-hmm. And during that time is when Hurricane Katrina happened. Yep. And so during that time, She stayed for like almost six weeks or so. She stayed for over a month. And she was writing all her stuff, her trial ministry. Like she was like, you know, this is the word the Lord has given me. And she kept telling me, she was like, you know, I've been called for this. I don't know why he called me now. Mm. Because my mom was always in church. Yeah. And so she was like, um, and prior to her getting sick is when she kept saying, I feel like God is calling me to to preach. And I was like, well, you know, you always told me if if he called, you got to answer, right? Mm-hmm. And she was like, I know, I just want to be sure that it ain't me. And that is a gift in itself. Because mm-hmm. a lot of times, we'll hear something, and it's just you thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about the Lord. So, no, the Lord didn't tell you that. <laughs> you are thinking. It's Lord Farquhar. He's <laughs> from Shrek. The right. Lord of hosts ain't said a word. Right. <laughs> and so she said, I need God to confirm it for me. And so watching her do go through that and then to see him confirm it and for her to be so steadfast in it. And I remember, because she was having a very difficult time with my stepfather, she was just angry with the situation of her getting sick and not necessarily uh, understanding, because I, I could never imagine it mm-hmm. as a, you know, at the age I was at that time. And just to see it, I mean, I, I didn't know my mom was going to get sick either with a terminal disease where we knew she was going to die. Mm-hmm. He just was so angry about it. But she just kept saying, you know, th- this is part of it. God wants, he has a role in this, mm-hmm. right? But I have to do this. And so nothing was going to stop her. So I remember when she had a uh, her trial sermon the night of, it was uh, December of, uh, 05 she did okay. her trial sermon because her birthday she did it the same weekend of her birthday which was December 8th and he asked her my stepfather said now how you gonna get up there because she couldn't walk at this point she had lost her ability to walk we had to push in the wheelchair he said now how you gonna get up there and preach your trial sermon how you gonna do that you can't even walk and she said I ain't gonna do it the Lord gonna do it mm. that's what he told me and he gonna do it and that night we pushed my mama into the church in a wheelchair but she stood for four hours that night and preached the whole sermon and she never walked again from that day. What? She she gave it, every, it, honey. That night is when I separated my mama from from 
an angel. That's when I knew. I said, oh, this is not my mama tonight. Mm. This is a woman who was sent here to live out, out her purpose. And so I understood at that point, our life is not our own. We're here to do a job, right? And I witnessed that that night. Yes, I had the privilege of calling her my mother, but she was more than that. She was here on assignment, and she did it that night. And that lives inside of me. And so anytime when I, you know, doubt or feel like I can't, I remember that. And I'd be like, oh, well, I ain't got to because he can. Mm -hmm. So uh, that gave me so much uh, that I live with now inside of me uh, for different times of my life. And part of the thing I think that helped pull me out of the dark place that I was in at one time. We want to take a quick break from the show to talk to you about our good friends over at ShipStation. Listen, shipping delays, supply shortages, holiday demand. Last year was a mess. I couldn't even enjoy my vacation because of Black Friday and, and Christmas shopping and all the mess ups we had with our merch order. Listen, now you're ringing in the new year with impatient customers, returns, and expensive shipping rates. It's time to switch to a shipping solution that can handle it all painlessly. Why would you use anything but ShipStation? Are you crazy? The easiest and most convenient choice for e-commerce sellers. Import orders from any sales channel, ship using any carrier with deeply discounted rates. Listen to this. I've been doing merch for a long time, messing up for even longer. I've tried it all. And listen, the only thing that really works, supremely works, is ShipStation. I was able to pull from Shopify and Etsy and all that stuff all into one easy to use manifest. And that's my favorite part. I need ease. I need efficiency. And ShipStation gives me both. Manage every order, Amazon, eBay, Etsy, on your own website from anywhere, even your phone. Your small business can access the same discounted rates usually reserved for the Fortune 500 companies without contracts or commitments. All right? Make shipping the easy part of having an online store. You have bigger ideas to think about. No wonder 98% of companies that use ShipStation for a year keep using it for as long as they're in business. It's that good. Ship more in less time with ShipStation. Use my offer code STAGE to get a 60-day free trial. That's two months free of no hassle, just free shipping. Just go to ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, and type in STAGE. ShipStation, make ship happen. And now, back to the show. So, yeah, so let's talk about that, because you was... In LA, you know, mm -hmm. waiting, it's not working. You yeah. you are you are working. Like <laughs> right. did you wait well? How were you how were you struggling? Because your your mom passed mm -hmm. and your dream had not come to pass yet. Yeah. Like what was that like? When she passed away, I had this burst of like, I gotta go. I gotta do it now. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I did. I worked. Uh, I did this when Blockbuster was a thing. I did a bunch of straight to DVD movies. Mm -hmm. I think I did like five in a year. Honey, I was a whole celebrity back home in North Carolina because I had movies at Walmart. Okay, <laughs> the DVDs was popping on the shelf. Okay, I had I was out there in the streets. Right, right. And um, I, I just I, I was doing anything that came my way. Music videos, Honey Tab was all in the music videos, commercials. Did he? You know, listen, <laughs> all in the videos. <laughs> but I did. Um, and everything was going really good. And then this is also around the time when The Secret came out. Mm -hmm. And I had did my first vision board, right? And I remember writing on there, uh, putting my headshot on the vision board. Mm -hmm. And I wrote specifically, working actress in, in 2008 and 2009 or whatever. And I worked all year. Mm -hmm. And then that next year rolled around, Tab ta didn't work. <laughs> Tab ta was like, what? What are you, why they ain't calling for me? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> what are it? I had wrote on this vision board. I had I had put a big house on there. I had put a Mercedes on there, mm. honey. We had bought a big house in Palmdale. Whew. Right, I bought a Mercedes. Okay, all the things on that vision board came to pass. Yeah, but what I did not do was be specific about. Oh Lord, let me get a house that I want somewhere I want to be. <laughs> also, Lord, when you give me the Mercedes, make sure I got enough money so I can. Take care of that maintenance on it, Lord, and keep up the payments, <laughs> Jesus, okay? Yeah, and then when I put that headshot, working actress, he said, well, you said 2008. Uh -oh. So I let you work all the year nah, long. You, now you know what I meant. <laughs> he said, 2008 on. Then, see, when I say he told me to be specific, <laughs> he said, now, now, let's try that again. I see God be petty just Listen, a little bit. He said, oh, 2008, gotta, huh? <laughs> Bet. Five movie. You. What about 2009? <laughs> you ain't, you ain't say 2009, nothing. did you? You ain't doing that. I'm going to let you get your house. <laughs> 
and then you're not going to do much more after that, okay? Because <laughs> you in Palmdale, guess what I was doing working at a nursing home? <laughs> On third shift. See, I'm going to go back to work. Oh, I'm gonna keep you ain't job. never been afraid of going back. I will work today, okay? Honey, if you were walking Target, I'd be like, how y'all doing today? <laughs> Very boop, good. Boop, <laughs> boop, honey. Ain't ashamed to it work. Won't feel, I, I, I ain't won't feel that too is actually about it. freeing. Because oh, I told me and Melissa, listen, before I do something I don't believe in, I'll pick you up an Uber. Kev on stay. Yep. Yep. Make sure to tip me because you know if I'm here. Things don't went wrong. You know, Tab was in the Uber, honey, <laughs> dipping, honey. I had, I, and, and I was in. A, I had a Chrysler 300, right? So I kept trying to get them to put me on the black. They were like, "Ma'am, you don't qualify." <laughs> but, but it looked like a but phantom. But it's dark. Though. It's dark. It's dark blue. <laughs> I was like, I got the water bottles, the mints in the back. Remember when we had the fires and yes. there was smoke? I went and bought masks before oh. people were wearing them. <laughs> I bought masks and put them in my back for the people in case the ashes, because you know the ashes be everywhere. I was dedicated. To <laughs> I was serving the community. <laughs> I was. I be wanting to do my best work, no matter the job I'm in. <laughs> I would love to be the person that Uber put me on the black. <laughs> Trust me. When they when I pick them up, they'll know. I said, you sure I can get this a premium car? I went over there to the Burbank. I went over there. I said, y'all look at this car. It ain't got but 68,000 miles. <laughs> This car, this car got chrome. <laughs> that is factory, <laughs> factory chrome. It ain't got but sixty-eight thousand miles on it. Put me in, coach. That ain't nothing. They wouldn't do look it at the They wouldn't do. But but several times people would get in. I said, this is so nice. I said, I, will you write to them and tell them because I'm trying to get my rate up. Because this $17 to take you to Long Beach is <laughs> not working for me. <laughs> But yeah, oh, yeah, Tab ain't never been afraid to work, okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So let's fast forward to 2016. Okay. Okay, now you start experiencing some chronic pain yes. and fatigue and a headache that lasted a year yes. and seven months. Yeah, yeah. How did you manage to get up every day oh. with a headache that lasted a year and seven months? You know, I do not know. Mm. Honestly, some days I look back and I'm like, I don't know how I got it. Right, he he had to get me up because um, the only thing that really did keep me going, honestly, was my children. Mm-hmm. Right, uh, not even Chance. You know, it, for he was in the back. Yeah, but I was like, I gotta. I, I, my children need me. Mm-hmm. Like Chance is grown, he can survive. That's yeah. what I would think. I was like, he could survive without me. Although he couldn't because he would starve to death. <laughs> but <laughs> he can't cook. Right, <laughs> but my children. Um, I just, I just was like, Lord, I can't leave my kids. Mm-hmm. Like, I gotta, I gotta push through for them. And so I was still, you know, I still worked for the first, uh, maybe six months of that headache. <sighs> I was still working every day. Wow, and I would, sometimes I'd have to be out for like a week, and then I'd go back because it would, it would come in like, like episodes mm-hmm. where some were worse than others. Some I could, I could, it's there, but I can still be regular, you mm-hmm, know. Mm-hmm. But I just feel it, and I didn't have as much energy, mm-hmm. and the pain would kind of subside a bit, but it would still be there. But then some days it would just put me down, right? Mm-hmm. I would fall when I would walk. I remember losing my vision for a day, and it was just a, a very scary thing. Everything was just dark and blurry. Mm. And uh, Chance was, I remember, you know, we had insurance, but we had Kaiser. Now, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I had the best birthing experience at Kaiser. It's great for children, but when you got something really happens, they have no answers for you. They didn't for me. And so we were trying to do everything. Chance was taking me to, like, uh, like holistic people we had found, and, like, we went to this uh, little uh, Asian man, like a Chinese doctor or something that, you know, doing, like, mm-hmm. uh, acupuncture and yeah. stuff. He had, like, incense burning. He probably was 200 years old, and I was like, this going to work. <laughs> this, this, Not this. 200. Listen, because that's how old he looked. And he laid me on that table and put all the different things in my head and everywhere and was trying to, like, you know, help me because you're desperate for help. Right. And um, I was just I was just trying anything that I could. And then I got to a place where I gave up, too. You know, I, I was like, I'm going to die. I, I don't know what's going to happen before they diagnosed me with something because they kept saying we can't we can't figure it out. So I told Chance, I said, listen, now I got to be um, smart about this. If they can't diagnose me. Let's go ahead and do a million-dollar insurance policy now. 
because if I'm if I'm out of here, at least y'all have something. Yeah. And I took out a million dollar insurance policy on myself before they could diagnose me with anything. Because once they put it on, once you, they diagnose you, you can't, can't do that. You can't get it. Exactly. I said, well, you, you, let's Look do at it. That's selfless, Tom. Listen, I I I was preparing to leave here, mm. and I was like, I'm gonna leave because I you know I hadn't worked a steady job. I had been working like contract manufacturer was my last job that I worked before Uber, um, for about five years, mm-hmm. and. That was, you know, forty thousand dollars a year, right? right? So, but I didn't have, and I had like a little twenty five thousand dollars insurance policy, but I have nothing to leave behind. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, if I go, I need them to have something, you know. My husband, my partner, you know, what I'm saying I don't want him to be stressing. My little forty thousand did contribute, yeah, you know. So, um, and I was on disability at that point, mm-hmm. and and that won a lot of money. So we did uh, do that, and I still got the policy. Still? Increase it a little bit more. Oh, my Because well I got a little bit more. Well, hey, now the billion ain't going <laughs> to cut it. Damn, go. I need That's 10 for Blackie. Yeah. <laughs> Blackie the beneficiary. <laughs> <laughs> I want him to have a good life if something <laughs> happened to mama. <laughs> so you struggled for almost two years. I did. And then Choice recommends, you that, that recommends to you to watch What the Hell. Yes. You know. So how did that change your life? You do a 30-day vegan challenge. Mm-hmm. And then you, you what's going on there? Yeah, so she came home from school, and she was like, Mom, we saw this uh, documentary at school today. I think you should watch it. And it was What the Hell on Netflix. And, you know, Joyce, Joyce don't get excited about much. Right. She's very even tone, right? Yeah. And uh, I was like, well, girl, let's see, you know, what it's about. And we watched it, and uh, I decided, you know, with the family, I was like, let's do a 30-day vegan challenge. And that I'm so blessed because my family, like my daughters knew, as much as I tried to hide it, and this for somebody, honey, you try to hide things from your children but they know okay they know when you are not well they can feel it and they can see it Mm -hmm. and so I'm so grateful that she saw what she did and thought to try to help me (laughs) right Um, and then we did that together as a family and I'm grateful for that you know Chance was like all right, let's do it 30 days I'm with you babe you know and in those first 10 days my headache disappeared of going vegan Mm -hmm. and uh, I knew I was on to something at that point and during that same time, you know, and I know I've told this story a million times, but it's so important and the truth is that when right prior to that, you know, I had a dream, you know, and I had saw myself like on a show and was like, Lord, you know, what what in the world was that? Because my dreams be, be meaning things. Mm-hmm. And I had prayed and, and asked God about that. Like God revealed that to me. Like, what was that? And I heard that voice that said, start doing videos. And I was like, <laughs> no. Nah. Um, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> not you telling right? the voice, nah, Tal. I'm not gonna do that, Lord, because also a couple weeks prior to that dream, it was when I had my coming to Jesus moment in my bathroom, and I was like, Lord, I'm gonna ask you one last time because I know I ain't really been praying to you right, because mm-hmm. I won't really praying to Him right. I thought I really let's just be honest. I had an attitude with God. Really? This, this I was like, you done forgot about me. Like, you don't hear me no more. So my prayers weren't even sincere anymore. I was just like, what, for what? I'm still sick. It's been over a year. Doctors can't tell me what's wrong. You, you I'm good. Mm-hmm. But this was like my day that I said, okay, God, one more time. This time I'm for real. If you heal me, you can have me. Want to take a quick break from the show to talk to you about HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned Ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. This new year is a great time to focus on what's most important to you. Whether it's saving money by ordering less takeout, learning to cook, or prioritizing your wellness, HelloFresh is here to help with endless options to make cooking at home simple and enjoyable. Listen, I was in Egypt for two weeks and Germany for another week, and I came to the United States and I wanted home cooked food. Now, you know what I didn't want to do? Actually go to the grocery store, actually go through ingredients, actually look at recipes. HelloFresh was like, you want home cooked food? But without the fuss of thinking about it and preparing for it all on your own, we got you. And that saves me time. And that's what I don't have a lot of extra time. That's why I like HelloFresh. I love me a little bit of balsamic vinegar, spicy chicken, cauliflower. HelloFresh gives me everything I need, all the meals I want. Let me tell you what I had. Uh, this week from HelloFresh. I had me Monterey Jack unfried chicken because I'm trying to be healthy. Had me some beef flauta supreme with a pico de gallo and a lime crema. 
and I finished off just last night with sweet chili pork and cabbage stir fry. With a little bit of cilantro and some crispy fried onions, because you know I like me crispy fried onions. And you can have that same thing. HelloFresh offers the flexibility you need to easily easily customize your online order or in the app. Easily change your delivery day, food preferences, and plant size, or skip a week whenever you need to. Don't forget dessert. Satisfy your sweet tooth with seasonal limited goodies like Dunkaroos, cookie dough, or vanilla delight cheesecake. Listen this. Go to HelloFresh.com slash stage 16 and use the code stage 16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Go to HelloFresh.com slash stage 16 and use the code stage 16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. And now back to the show. Ooh. And I ain't going to try to live this life my way no more. I'm going to simply do whatever you ask of me. Right. And mm -hmm. I meant it. I meant it that day. And I feel like that day something happened in my bathroom. When I walked out, I was not the same. And I can't explain that uh, no better way than that. Um, and then a couple weeks later, I had that dream. So when God said, do videos, I was like, nah. He was like, you remember in the bathroom, though? You said, if I heal you, I can have you. You got a long memory. Listen, he will catch you on a bad day and bring <laughs> it back up and use it against you, okay? <laughs> Because that's what he did. I said, now, you know I was having a bad day that day. But I also was living the life of obedience. Yeah. And so then during that time, um, you know, on the vegan challenge, I was like, okay. I had started doing the videos. And um, after uh, the the day, like, 29, and I was, like, feeling better, and I told Chance, I'm going to go vegan. This is my life. I'm not going back. I know the challenge is 30 days, but this is my life. And, of course, you know, Chance was like, that's so good for you, babe. <laughs> I wish you love and peace and happiness, <laughs> but I'm going to eat a piece of chicken tomorrow, okay? <laughs> and that was all right with me because, again, the Lord didn't give it to him. Right. This, this was my journey he gave to me. I heard a word somebody say, you you following the, the word God gave to somebody else, you're going to drown. Ooh. Ooh, that honey. word was for for the, that yeah. that word what that that, that, that part in the Red Sea that yeah. wasn't for Pharaoh. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Go ahead and try it. Let's see what Let's happens. See what happens. Ain't nobody told him. you that you're gonna be down in there. Y'all remember him? Yeah. That's what it would be. Yeah, absolutely. So now a lot of people don't realize this. People think your your success started with TikTok, but you yeah. had you had prior success. You yeah. was doing vegan. Um, brand deals you had the yeah. ttla sandwich mm -hmm. what was that time because tiktok fame that's when everybody knew about you but yeah. tell us about that time right before that what was that like when you saw hey oh so these videos i listen yeah they started giving me a little bit of money here and there right people know me whole foods then came over and said yeah. hey Tab, what was that period yeah like? so that was 2017 when i did the vegan uh challenge mm -hmm. was driving uber in in, in october december 30th driving uber mm -hmm. ate the sandwich ttla did the video Four days later, Whole Foods reached out, right? So I did my first brand deal with them. Th that was my first brand deal, mm -hmm. not even knowing. I didn't know nothing about social media. Mm -hmm. I was so, uh, honey, bougie in my own right, right. thinking I was better than doing a video for so long that I did not even understand it. And every friend that I had that did do videos, I called them, but they wouldn't help me. Really? Yes. That's a God on truth, and God bless them. And if they call me today, I will willingly help them. So, um, That's so kind of you, Tab. Because I would have been like, huh. <laughs> you could not live with your own failure. And where did that lead you? Back but to me. I had to figure it out on my own, yeah. right? I was taking, I was doing something because I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And I was taking like $500 for stuff, and they was making millions of dollars off a of tab. <sighs> That's why when I be like, Kev, you get your money. Because yeah. Tab has gotten got. But let me tell you how the Lord works. Mm -hmm. Oh, everybody who got me had to come back around to tab. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord said, tab, that's all right. They didn't know they was paying their tithes. Okay? Hey, they, they didn't know. They didn't know they were sowing a seed upon you. <laughs> Where did it go? Where did it roll off to? The devil tried to take my brain. Wait, the tamarind is running. The tamarind is doing a deacon run. The devil tried to throw it under the couch. Devil, you can't take my praise. They was only paying a tenth. Tab said they paying the whole thing now. You Listen. try to throw my tamarind under the couch. I don't need no tamarind. Even the rocks will cry out. <laughs> Listen. That is the truth. Yeah, it is. I mean, because uh, I did not know. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's a whole new world. Mm -hmm. uh, as an actress, you know, I'm a, I'm a SAG actress. Right. 
I know the union fees. Right. right? I know how <laughs> right. much they're supposed to pay me. Right. You got a document. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, but even my agents that I had at the time, they didn't know anything about social media. They was like, girl, we go. I said, can y'all help me with this? They were like, well, we don't really do social media, <laughs> right? We, that's not something that we do because it was frowned upon for a very long time. Yeah. And so I was taking whatever because I didn't know any better. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I started finding out, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Um, and, and actually, I remember watching uh, Eric Thomas one day. E.T., hip-hop e. preacher. right, because Chance loved him, so, you know, we always would listen to him. And he was like, uh, I think he had did like a, public speaking or something and he was working with somebody and had a conversation and he said he told him that his rate was ten thousand dollars and he said and they were like oh, okay great we'll do it. he was like and the guy said if they said yes great that means your rate is too low right and i said wait a minute you gotta have them go back and i thought to myself i'm gonna say ten thousand just see what they say mm. and they said yes i said oh my rate is too low <laughs> <laughs> Somebody will pay me more than ten thousand dollars. Oh my God! Like yeah. that's how I started understanding yeah. it. Yeah. And I was working with um, who I love like a brother, Stephen Love. Mm-hmm. He was uh, like a producing partner. He and I were like developing other stuff because he saw me way before anybody else did on Facebook. Mm-hmm. He reached out and said, "Hey, Tab, listen, I don't know. I'm looking at your lives on Facebook. This is 2017." Mm-hmm. He was like, "I feel like you got a show or something. I don't know." He said, "But but I have been called." Like, the Lord is telling me to, to reach out to yeah. you. Yeah. So me and him was doing, like, because he's a producer, a very well-known, amazing producer. And so I was like, well, you know what, Stephen? As things started rolling in, I was like, hey, I need you to be my manager. He was like, hey, um, Tab, I don't, I, I'm a producer. I said, yeah, but the Lord told me. <laughs> what you going to say to that? you <laughs> are my manager. Yeah. So I'm going to just start giving you 10% whether you do anything or not. And, mm. you'll, and you'll figure it out. And honey, Stephen started figuring it out. Didn't it? And we went on to do like maybe 26 deals together. Really? Yeah. Yeah. We worked. We worked and, and wow. got a lot of money um, that I thought was really good. Mm. The Lord said, that's what you can do now. Move on over. And let me show you what I can do. So now let's get to that time, right? So yeah. there was two videos in a short amount of time, right? Mm-hmm. I first found out you well, about you with Renegade. That <laughs> doggone Renegade, renegade, renegade. People thought I, that was I your husband. It was you choice. It was Nick. Yeah, yeah it, was it was Nick. My brother Nick. Yeah. yeah. So it was like, oh, that's. Listen. That is so. It was just. To me, the thing that you have the most is authenticity. <laughs> I'd be like, when you be. Listen, I'm, I'm joking, but I'm serious. Yeah. I was living in the pandemic, having a rough day. Going on TikTok. And Tab said, hello there. I literally said, hi. <laughs> Did y'all not? I, hand to the Lord. I was walking by myself. I said, hi. Then you said, you ain't having a good day. I yes, said, <laughs> <"Mm-mm."> <laughs> Listen to this whole video. Now, I made a funny video after. I remember. But that moment, the first that time was, I watched it, it real. I said, Listen. and I felt better. Oh. After watching that one minute video, because that TikTok was only a minute then. I said, man, I, Thank you. It's, uh-huh. Your voice was like a warm hug, oh. right? So, and I think that's what everybody loved. I mean, because I was on TikTok, your fan, I mean, you were reposting people at this time. Mm-hmm. Little kids. I mean, yeah. it was everyone. Disabled people. Every, you, and you know the internet. No one is universally loved. Yeah. It was like, everybody was like, I love Tab. <laughs> so amazing. then you make this carrot bacon video. Yeah. And that thing goes crazy. So what's going through your mind at that moment? Where you? This ain't even the first time you went viral. It's just yeah. like. Pandemic just started. Everybody's at home. It felt like everybody watched that. What was that like? You know, first of all, you know, I was resistant on that TikTok. <laughs> My daughter, yet again, Choice was like, Mom, you should get on TikTok. Really? And I was like, girl, I ain't get on there with them kids. <laughs> what am I going to do on there? Right? I can't get on TikTok. And she kept on hounding me about it. That's why that first video is the Renegade, because I was like, I just want to do the dance. Let oh. me. And so she trying to show us how to do it and I said you gonna have mommy out here looking crazy now I gotta now I have to do a video mm-hmm. right um I I did my videos again with no expectation care mm-hmm. right I didn't know I mean I, I thought I was doing all right on Facebook I had 500,000 followers on Instagram I had 200,000 last March right in, in in 2020 and I was making very good money I was doing all right yeah and so I was like well girl let me see if I can do a recipe real quick and uh did and in that first week my video started going viral and I was like okay mm-hmm. well you know and so I didn't expect to have a million followers in 30 days 
and then a week later they have another million. So I had, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, that blew me away. I thought they really liked my guacamole. <laughs> Cause that's why I had made the guacamole. <laughs> and but but this is the thing that people don't nobody talks about this, but I know because me and the Lord have talked about it. So uh the day before I hit that that million, uh it was like Easter, right? Mm-hmm. And I did communion on a video, mm-hmm. like you know, and, yeah, and, and yeah. Did, you know, I know it was the blood, honey. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, you Jesus died. died on the cross, and I know it was the blood for me, honey. Did that. <laughs> on the video, mm-hmm. did communion, and people ripped me to shreds in my in my inbox. Said, "Girl, you did communion. Ain't nobody gonna work with you in Hollywood." And the next day, my life changed. What? I, people don't even realize that. What? People was like, "Tab, you went too far with that girl. They, you, girl, they ain't gonna. They ain't nobody gonna work with you in Hollywood." Seemed like a whole lot of nobody. I said, "Well, honey, nothing. I don't need them. I just <laughs> need the Lord." Hey! And literally, the next day is when. That, Cause later that afternoon, I made the cat bacon. Oh my god! And that next day, I think in two days it had like twelve million views or something. It just it went was crazy. Everybody was yeah. watching. Yeah, we was all vegan that first yeah. month of the pandemic. <laughs> we, yes, I will definitely try vegan. You know, yeah. <laughs> Oreos is vegan. Yeah, <laughs> right. everybody vegan. Yeah, yeah. So but yeah. after that, I mean, you. Be, I'm talking about Red Table Talk, L.A. Times, yeah. New York Times, yeah. The Shy. Your own show, Ellen Tube, signed with CAA. Yeah. This all happened in 2020. 2020. And not even a full year. Yeah. The Lord ain't even need all 12 months. Yeah. He only, he can give me 10. Listen. I mean, and your life changed tremendously. Mm-hmm. And then the next year, amen, yeah. nominated for an MWCP image. I mean, Im- yeah, Image Award. Yeah. Be gone, had to win. Stiff competition. <laughs> there was another comedian who he was that trying I thought was going to take hard. it. Out. I actually thought that they had set me up because <laughs> that guy, I don't know if you've ever heard of him, Kev on stage, um, he's also Kevin Fredericks, but he had hosted the red carpet stuff. He at the sure NWCP did. Imagery. Thought it was a shoe And I said, oh, they just need an extra person to put up there. They're going to give it to Kev. I, 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 and I was prepared to celebrate. Oh. I was like, yeah, I came to your dinner. I said, he already know he's going to win. You saw I now sit, and that was nice, James Warner. <laughs> I said, you know what? Let's just have me a little dinner too, because Kev did it. I mean, I ain't gonna win, but I really didn't think I would. Now let me tell you, I had a whole different view on this. I saw the people. I said, okay, okay, I might still got a chance. Desi Malone got one. <laughs> Carlton, all you, I might have a chance. <laughs> Budget Easter, I got a chance. Listen, like, oh, you might win, Kev. Tab, I said, oh, I'm the second. Second is <laughs> being nominated really is important. <laughs> really, you just want to be in the number. Let's Once say. I saw a tab, I said, well, God, dog. When you said Melissa was like, oh, I don't know, Kev. I Once, said, oh. And I looked no. at her. Because we was on the TV. I looked. I said, Tab. She said, nah, I ain't, ain't going to get Tab. Now, I love you. You know, we go, I'm going to set you up with your own party. This, <laughs> it's going to be the only celebration you get to have. <laughs> but you know what, Tab? I was happy. I, I genuinely, and you. I had no anger, animosity. Me either. I was like, go ahead, Tab. Listen. Nobody had a year bigger than you could have won the Oscar for <laughs> lead actor in the British film cinematography of left handed people. And I'd be like, Tab guy, I know she ain't left handed, but just go on and give it to her. Go on and give it to her, honey. I mean, I was just, I never expect anything. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. The only thing I expect is if we do a deal together, run me my money. Right. <laughs> run me my money. Run me. <laughs> My money. That's all. Tab only expect what's on here. That's a, anything else. I never expect. Wow. Right? So I was just. I was really blown away. Mm. I was really. I was shocked. too when I yeah. lost. Oh, uh, <laughs> listen. <laughs> now yeah. earlier this year, we're gonna call this the prayer heard around the world. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, a Lord. certain talk show host. Mm-hmm. You know, they had come for Tab, mm-hmm. and you know, and, and I said, hey, okay, now listen. There was avocados all over the world. People was getting them ready. Right. And where most people respond with anger, frustration, Mm -hmm. you responded with grace and a prayer. Mm -hmm. How did that day look for you? I I was up working early in the morning. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, And my phone was going off. I was in my pajamas in my office. Right. Because I was trying to get some stuff done. And 
my phone. I was looking at my phone, and people were messaging me, saying, "Girl, Whitney Williams talking about you." And I said, "Oh my God, <laughs> I didn't even know she knew me. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing." <laughs> and then I clicked on the video. I said, "Oh, oh my God." Mm-hmm. Like I was like. I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, my Lord, this lady, she really don't know me. Right. And so I put my phone down and went back to working. I I literally was not even going to respond. I was like, well, people have said worse. Mm -hmm. And I went on back to working, and the Lord said, "Uh uh-uh, you you, you have to respond. Really? And I said, but for what? To say what? Like, why? And I just prayed in my office for a minute, and he said, I need you to give this woman grace and that's what i did mm. um with no expectation honey i did that video posted it and went right on back to working really it wanted to chance came out the uh because chance i hadn't even told chance what had happened chance had got up took you know uh went to the gym all he came in in my office said, Babe, what, what, what in the world going on my phone but people calling me talking about man keep your head up it's gonna be all right don't worry what's going on i was like man wendy williams you know, said, you know, something crazy today. And, you know, I was telling him, he was like, dang, what what she say? Like, people, I was like, I responded. So he watched my video, and then he came back in the office and, and, and gave me a kiss. He said, I don't really care what she said, but I love you, baby. Mm. And I was like, it don't even really matter. I really did not think that that was going to take off. Right. I did it just like I do anything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and my phone... For about two weeks, was blowing up from every news outlet. Every person wanted to interview me. I mean, from ABC, Fox, CBS, CNN, every person. Mm-hmm. And I said, no, thank you. Because that was not the purpose of that. Because mm. if you do that, that, that takes the genuine moment out of it. Right. This is the first time I've ever talked about it. That's like, other than like on my book tour when people may mm-hmm. ask, but w- there's nothing to say other than I have literally been praying for her every day since then so you i i thought you was just being shady no i was being genuine okay i was like that's great that's how petty i want to be I no be i was christian lit- petty i meant that from my soul i see i, I look you know what Pat, that's why you gonna be blessed because <laughs> kev on stage would have been good morning america what i told her was this <laughs> now you let me know y'all know you think you talking to you know what i'm saying because i'm saved and you really had a genuine Heart first response. Yeah. And that's why I think it separates you from pretty much everybody else. And I think that's why we love you. You know, all of us watching, we just be like, man, I want to. I think in a, it's an aspiring love, mm-hmm. you know, because as a country, the last eight, you know, 10 years, I feel like as a country, we've become more emboldened and more frustrated and more angry towards each other. And then Tab came out of nowhere like, hey, y'all, let me give y'all a hug. <laughs> like, it was like, <laughs> man, I've been angry. We, you know what I mean? we all need that, right? We all need. We love. all need that. I think it's the thing we all lack the most of. And I think that's why we love you, Pat. That's why no. we don't mind when you beat us in awards <laughs> that we never been nominated for. We just be like, no, I love you, Pat. But before we let you go, Tab, we got a gift from me for you. Me? For you from Kev on Stage Studios, oh Marquita Bradley, Tone, Brittany, all the people. We thought about you. Want to let you know we're, we're and you got to open up on camera. Really? Well, yeah, it's just a small token and of it's our appreciation. And purple is my favorite. We know. Now Marquita Bradley don't miss on <laughs> nothing. Oh my. Goodness. We just want you to 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 know that we love you and we're rooting for you. We just want the best. I know it's for something you. good because Kev is rich. <laughs> <laughs> Look, let's see. Oh, ain't that something, Tab? Oh, that's great. What's the year on that? Show the camera, Tab, so the people oh, know. Wow, it's a dime. Oh yeah. But you know, do you, do you, did you I, pick this year purposely? Mm-mm. The Lord picked that See, year. So every time I get a dime, <laughs> right? Um, and, and and most of you already know the story that my mother leaves me dimes. Mm-hmm. So I always look at the year first because the year always is the message is in the year. Mm. And so the year on this is 2016, Man. which was the toughest year of my life. <laughs> that, that's, that's the year I got sick. Um, it was the toughest year of my life. And yet here I still stand. So come on and bless. Very them. good. Thank you, Mama. Hey, you you, you just good. blessed all okay. over. Okay, Tab, before we yes. let you go, okay, we got yes. Kev's top ten. All right, all we right. We ask every guest to answer these top ten questions. All we ask is that you be honest, whatever that means to you. Okay. Okay. First one, who's your favorite person? Mm. Me. <laughs> and that's your business. That's my business, honey. <laughs> Ain't nobody better than Tab, okay? 
I am free. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, what <laughs> what's one of your happiest moments? Oh, one of my happiest moments. Mm. Guys, it's been so many. But just one. Mm-hmm. Just one. It ain't got to be the happiest. It could just be one. Uh, give my daddy a truck. Oh, he boy, he his yeah. smile almost <laughs> broke his face open. Yeah. I don't think you could smile bigger Listen, than that. Listen, he was in shock for about 30 minutes. <laughs> I, like, I had to cut the video because he would never take the key. He sat on the carport like this. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Dad, if you don't close your mouth, a fly going to fly in there. Honey, he was like... <laughs> He was stuck. Yeah. It was about 30, but that was a, a lifelong dream of mine mm-hmm. to be able to do something like that for my daddy. And uh, my daddy worked hard his whole life. Ain't never, ever owned a brand new car. Mm. Listen, I ain't even want to drive it to the house because I ain't want to have no miles on it. I ain't want the miles from the dealership. I wanted <laughs> them to drop it off there. <laughs> but we had to drive it on in there. But he never, ever had a brand new, new oh, car. Oh, so. what a feeling. Yeah. Okay, what's one of your saddest moments? <sighs> uh one of my saddest moments is um, uh, probably the day they diagnosed my son with motor tics. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It was a tough day for me. I get I've that. since learned from it, mm-hmm. but it was a very tough day. Okay. Mm-hmm. Grits, salt and pepper, <laughs> or sugar? <laughs> you better stop playing with me and put that sugar on him. <laughs> That's now. what I love. <laughs> Tab them came to my defense. <laughs> Listen. Now what y'all finna butter, say? sugar. And a little cheese. A little cheese. I heard you and say I, that. And now I do it the vegan way, but that's how my mama always made it. You know, uh, the Quaker, you know, used to buy mm-hmm, them the instant mm-hmm. ones. And the cheddar, my mama would put butter and sugar in that one. And that's why you're blessed. My God, my God. That's why God chose you out of everybody. Uh, listen. He said, you got sugar in You better grits? start putting sugar in your grits. I said, you better start putting sugar in your grits. Yeah, that boy. Listen, is, your, about? is your mortgage, is it, is it due? <laughs> you can't find the funds? You better put that sugar in your grits, honey. You want a You want a promotion? <laughs> Put that sugar in your grits. And watch I'm stripping that out, Marquita. <laughs> Peter Popoff, Miracle Water, sugar in your grits. He done turned it around for you. The check is in the mail. If, you, <laughs> if your life has been salty, it's because that's salt in your grits. All right? Get that sugar and bring it on in sweet, Woo! okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sweet potato pie or pumpkin pie? That's cake. I know. I had you with the grits, but I'm going to lose you on the pie. It's a sweet potato That's cake. All right. Although, I'm not going to lie to you, one day uh, at one of my jobs I used to work, <laughs> there was a lady that always made this, like, pumpkin pie bread. Mm. It was the best thing I'd ever had in my life. There you go. But pumpkin pie one for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anita Baker or Patty LaBelle? Ooh, Patty LaBelle. Patty LaBelle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Only because she was my mama favorite. Oh, okay. I, right. I love Anita, too. We all love Anita yeah. from childhood. But listen, you know, Donna yeah. is iconic. And Patty had some iconic things. She happen, did. So, you know, she did. And she loved the color purple. And she does. <laughs> Favorite black saying? <laughs> you can do some black saying, so you can choose one of your own. Because that's my business. That's, <laughs> listen. That's, that's, listen. Listen. Because that's yeah, my business. Yeah. You know, another one used to be because I said so, but it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> it, it ain't. Okay. What excites you? Freedom. Mm. Tab is living free now. Honey, freedom excites me. Honey, mm. just can't nothing move me. Yes. Yeah. Ba ba Yeah. I just learned them tongues yesterday with the rail. Oh, okay. Very good. <laughs> what bores you? Uh, ooh. What bores me is uh people who are content, mm-hmm. right? Not wanting to do anything new or try anything new. Yeah. Uh. I, I just can't. I, I'm always looking to learn something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, last one. Okay. What do you want your legacy to be? Oh, uh, I want my legacy to be that I made people feel loved and heard and understood and that everyone had a friend in me. Oh, you got a friend in town. <laughs> Come on, we're all standing. You got a friend in Tab. Ladies and gentlemen, Tab at the Brown. Tab, tell the people where they can find you if they don't know where Uh-oh. you are already. Uh-oh. I don't know how they wouldn't. Well, very good. Uh, I am Tab at the Brown everywhere. Uh, Instagram, uh, 
Facebook, YouTube, Tabitha Brown. Tabitha Brown. There you go, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Shall Tabitha we end Brown, it the right way, though? We should have. Yeah. Yeah. Honey, we should tell the people to go on about their business. Mm-hmm. Wait, do you have to do something before that? No, no, no. You go ahead and tell okay, them. Okay, because I know sometimes you'll run an ad. No, I ain't going to. Okay. We're going to fix that in post. Oh, okay. And you got to let them go out the way you got to let them go out. Because I like how you end it. I bought that sweatshirt. Oh, oh, well, I couldn't good. find it today. Listen, first of all, thank y'all for supporting Kev. Uh, Kev, you're very special, and I want you to always know that. And every time I see you, I'm going to remind you of that. Thank you, Tara. Okay? Thank Continue you. Continue to be who you are oh, yeah. and who God has called you to be. I love you, and I appreciate you. Oh. Okay? I'm feeling emotions. Okay. <laughs> Stop. Tony, <laughs> turn the camera off. <laughs> and until the next time, honey, go on about y'all business, all right? Have the most amazing day. But even if you can't have a good one, don't you dare go messing up nobody else's him. Hmm? Very good. Love y'all, y'all heard that? <laughs> Unedited on the Kev on Stage Studios, <laughs> streaming services, wherever podcasts are found, YouTube, Facebook, Tab of the Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, we love you, Tab. God bless y'all. We'll see you Bye, next y'all. time.